Hello everyone and welcome to episode number two of my visit to the state of Florida. Today I'm in Sarasota, which some people call Circus City because many of the circus acts would spend their winter months here and many of them would eventually retire here. Today I'll be visiting the final resting place of some of the most notable names in the circus world. My first stop is at the Minnesota Memorial Park in nearby Bradenton. Some of the most notable names in the circus world are resting here, none are more prominent than my first stop. After entering the cemetery through the large stone arch, I have no trouble locating the large private mausoleum of circus founder Charles Ringling. Charles Edward Ringling was born in McGregor, Iowa on December 2nd. 1863. He, along with his brothers, founded the Ringling Brothers Circus in 1884. And the early success of the circus allowed the Ringling Brothers to buy out many of their smaller circuses. And eventually, they bought out their largest competitor, the Barnum and Bailey Circus. In 1919, the two shows merged, forming the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, which became known as the greatest show on earth. Over the years, Charles amassed a small fortune and eventually relocated to the Sarasota area. We bought large parcels of land and was instrumental in the commercial development of Sarasota. He built a home here and was one of the area's most popular citizens. He continued to contribute to the growth of the area while still being heavily involved in the circus until his death on December 3rd, 1926. He is resting here in the large private family mausoleum. After his death, the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus continued to perform under the big top until 1956, when the tents were abandoned in favor of large permanent arenas. For the next 90 years, the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus continued to entertain children of all ages. But in the early 2000s, attendance began to dwindle, and operating costs soared. Finally, on May 21, 2017, greatest show on earth closed following its final performance at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, ending almost 150 years of circus entertainment. Walking from the Ringling Mausoleum toward the center of the cemetery, we come to the final resting place of one of the circus world's most well-known performance families. Here, surrounded by a small chain barrier, we find the grave of the flying Walendas. The Flying Walendas were known for performing a high wire act, circuses, and at unique locations throughout the world. Most of their stunts were performed without the use of a net. The family was led by German-born Carl Walenda, who began performing at the age of six. Through the years, several members of the act lost their lives while performing their stunts. But the family continued not only to perform, but continued to increase the risk. In fact, at the age of 73, Carl lost his life while attempting to walk 120 feet above the ground, 
between the towers of two buildings in Puerto Rico. A wind gust caused a daredevil to lose his balance and fall to the pavement below. Resting next to Carl is his wife Helen, who began performing at the age of 16 and married Carl in 1936. She continued to perform with the act until she retired in 1956 and was with Carl when he fell to his death in 1978. Helen died in 1996 at the age of 85. Several members of the Walenda family are resting here, including Carl Helen's adoptive son, Mario, who was left paralyzed when he was injured during a performance in 1962. Carl's nephew, Dieter Schlepp, is also buried here. Dieter died in 1962 while performing the Act Seven Man Pyramid in Detroit, Michigan. And Chico Guzman, who was Carl's son-in-law. He died in 1972 when he touched the live wire during the axe rigging process. While I was here at the Walenda's grave site, I spent a few minutes talking with a very nice gentleman who saw me wearing a Pittsburgh Pirate baseball cap. He wanted to make sure that I knew that a Pittsburgh Hall of Fame manager was buried close by. And he brought me here to the grave of Bill McKechnie. Bill McKechnie was a player, coach, and manager during the early part of the 20th century. He played for a number of teams, including the Pittsburgh Pirates, Cincinnati Reds, and Boston Braves from 1907 to 1920. During his playing career, he amassed a lifetime batting average of 251, five home runs, and 240 RBIs. After his playing career ended, he went on to manage the Pittsburgh Pirates, Cincinnati Reds, Boston Braves, and St. Louis Cardinals, leading the Pirates and Reds to World Series championships in 1925 and 1940. Time as a manager, he amassed a record of 1,896 wins and 1,723 losses. After retiring from baseball, the Deacon, as he was called, retired here to the Brayton area, where he was a popular figure at the Pirate Spring Training Facility, which was named for him. McKechnie Field has since been renamed Lecom Park, but Bill McKechnie will always be a pirate favorite. He died here in Bradenton at the age of 79 on October 29th, 1965. While we were here at the grave of Bill McKechnie, the same gentleman that I'd been visiting with earlier, pointed out that another baseball Hall of Famer was resting just a few graves away. So, we walked a few steps to visit the grave of another Pittsburgh pirate great, Paul Wainer. Paul Wainer was born in Oklahoma on April 16, 1903. He was a standout baseball player in high school and college. He began his major league career in 1926 when he joined the Pittsburgh Pirates. He played most of his career with the Pirates from 1926 to 1940. And he spent his final years in the major leagues with the Boston Braves, Brooklyn Dodgers before retiring in 1945 as a member of the New York Yankees. Paul was named the National League's most valuable player in 1927. He was also a four-time All-Star, 
three-time National League batting champion. He had a career batting average of 333 with 3,152 hits, 113 home runs, and 1,309 runs batted in. After retiring from baseball, he settled here in Sarasota. He enjoyed hunting, fishing, and playing golf. He also served as part-time hitting coach for several major league teams during spring training. In 1952, Big Poison, as he was called, was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. In 1967, his younger brother Lloyd, nicknamed Little Poison, who also played for the Pirates from 1927 to 1941, joined Paul in the Hall of Fame, becoming the second brother combination to receive baseball's highest honor. Paul didn't live to see his brother's Hall of Fame induction. He died here in Sarasota on August 29, 1965, at the age of 62. This is where I'm going to end this video. I want to thank my new friend, Mr. Grayson McKee, who I enjoyed visiting with talking a little baseball. I also want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to comment and subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to keep up with my travels, please subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you down the road.